All right, the last topic I want to discuss in this authentication section is about callbacks. At the moment, if we expand the session object in the console, you can see that we have the user object. This object contains email, which is null, image, and a name. Now, none of these values will help us uniquely identify the logged in user. So if you have to perform a CRUD operation that requires user ID, it wouldn't be possible. You are going to come across situations where the default user object provided by the next auth library will not suffice and you would want to add custom properties. This is where callbacks come into picture. For our example, let's learn how to add the unique ID field to the session object. In the next auth catch all route, we're going to add another key called callbacks. This is an object. Here, we add two more keys, which are async functions. The first one is the JWT callback. So async, JWT, and this function receives five parameters, out of which we only need the first two right now. They are token and user. This JWT callback function is called whenever a JSON web token is created or updated. What we are going to do here is extract the ID from the user object, which GitHub provides and add it into the token. So if user exists, token.id is equal to user.id. And then we simply return the token. So all we are doing here is adding the ID field to the token. Now this token is not what we see in the dev tools. It is the session object. And to deal with that, next auth provides a session callback. So async session, and this function receives two parameters, the current session, and the token from the JWT callback. All we have to do is extract the ID from the token and add it to the user object. So session.user.id is equal to token.id and then we return the session. And that is pretty much it. Let's now go back to the browser, sign out, and then sign in. If I expand the session object and expand user object, we should be able to see the newly added ID property, which means either on the client using use session or on the server using get session, you have access to this unique user ID with which you can perform CRUD operations. All right, since we are dealing with just authentication in Next.js, this is where the tutorial ends. CRUD operations with MongoDB are not specific to Next.js, which is why I will not be covering them in this section. I don't have a tutorial on CRUD operations with React or Node.js, but you should be able to find some good tutorials out there. Also, since the CRUD operations vary depending on the database of your choice, I will leave that for you to learn if you're interested. All right, thank you all for watching and please do consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel as it helps out a lot. I'll see you in the next one.